the purpose of religion is faith, not to be exactly. proven by now, science. Now, is it, do you consider yourself a skeptic, I mean, agnostic? Agnostic, or agnostic? right. Yeah. Uh, the problem with, the, to me, the problem with uh, the atheist, particularly the militant atheist, is A, you can't prove there is no God. So you can't make the statement, I, I believe there is no God. How can you prove that? You could say, I, I have no belief in a God. Uh, but, but that usually entails other things like anti-religion, anti-Christianity, anti-Semitism, and so on, which I steer away from. To me, uh, religion is, is a fascinating field of study. It's the anthropology of religion, the sociology of religion. Why do people believe in God? These are, to me, fascinating, legitimate questions. Which one of these drives you nuts? I mean, which one is the most... Of all the weird things? Yeah. I think, I think the things that do bother me the most are the attempts, sci the attempts to use science to prove things that are in inherently unprovable, like God and religion and those sort, sort of things. Frank Tipler's... Uh, attempts to use cosmology and physics to prove the design of the universe by God, this sort of thing, uh, the Bible code, that, that whatnot. Uh, on the other side, on the, the sort of irritating side, is the psychic hotlines and the, the people that are clearly duping yeah. the public. Uh, the psychic hotlines are is just a total scam, and people buy into it. Uh, you know, it's three ninety five a minute. It's not poor man's therapy. The goal is to keep the people on the line 30 minutes. If you keep them on the line too long, they don't pay their phone bills. If too short, you don't turn a big enough profit. Psychic gets 60 cents a minute out of the 395. And they're just doing a cold reading technique. People call for love, health, money, career questions. And you just start in on the line, down the line. Just, I sense you're thinking about a career change. Uh, you're in a relationship right now, and one of you is more committed than the other one. Or you're experiencing financial tensions. And, 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 and the people will give you the feedback you need. Oh, that's right. Boy, how did you know? You know? Yeah. And then they'll tell you stories. And then you just spin a story around that, and you've got 30, 40 minutes. How about near-death experiences? Uh, these are often portrayed as empirical evidence that there is an afterworld. Uh, they're not, but they are one of the great unsolved mysteries. Uh, we have some idea of what's going on, the floating out of the body, the passing through the tunnel, the, the spiraling light. effect, yeah. the light, and so on. All these can be reproduced with hallucinogenic drugs. And the fact that we can reproduce them artificially with drugs must mean there's some mechanical mechanism in the brain for those phenomena to occur. Now, what happens during the near-death near experience, nobody knows. Uh, maybe, maybe the shock of an accident, a heart attack, the sudden loss of oxygen triggers the release of these neurotransmitter substances, experiencing the hallucination. I have a friend, you know, who knows? a French journalist who said to me in Paris not long ago, you know, uh, he's writing about this now, and he believes in it. He just believes that he had a near-death experience. I believe him. And I believe, too. I do, too. This is not somebody right, we're right. Whatever he had was not a look into what life is. Yeah, I, I never deny people's experiences. Right. They say, well, I was abducted by aliens. Okay, I believe that you believe that you were abducted by aliens, right. but, but did it happen here or out there? That's the question, and we have to ask, what's the evidence for it happening somewhere other than the mind? Stephen Gould, uh, Stephen Jay Gould wrote the forward to this. A yeah. skeptic? He's a skeptic. He's a friend. He's one of the great minds of our century. Uh, uh, a real humanist uh, in the sense of transcending science to culture. And uh, he's a skeptic because he doesn't like people being duped on one side, and he doesn't like the militant atheists who are hostile toward anything that isn't pure, progressive, reductionistic science. That, 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 that's, that gets dogmatic, too. And Is this phenomenon of believing in all these kinds of things, from UFOs to religious experiences, growing? In, oh. a, in the press of a modern world? And it is. Um, all the statistics and polls show that it's growing. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the big scale of things, say the last 500 years, I, I, the downfall of the universal church since the 60s, the rise of independent uh, uh, organizations, cults, groups, uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, I, I think uh, also the rejection in the 60s of, of, of authority starts with government, but science is a form of authority in our culture. It's the dominant cultural component we have. It's the reason for pseudoscience. It's because science is so important, there's a temptation, faith isn't enough. I need to prove that my faith is right. That's what leads to things like the Bible Code. And, uh, and I think that's a spinoff of the 60s of rejection of traditional authority. So you'll often hear in New Age uh, lectures and books and whatnot this sort of anti-science uh, undertone that, you know, those scientists, they think they know everything, and you know they don't. Or science can't answer everything, therefore there must be something else. And uh, so in a way I can't blame them sometimes because science sounds arrogant at times. Uh, and, we, and we probably need to keep some of that in checks and balances. But uh, that's one of the driving forces of it.
Why People Believe Weird Things by Michael Shermer of the magazine. It's also called Skeptic, this one, a tribute to Carl Sagan. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.